meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Everybody can please stay with me and say the pledge of the flag from the back of the room. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Piney. Here. Leach. Here. Nugent. Here. Thompson. Here. Young. Here. Zimmerman. Here. Lambert. Here. Okay, our first order of business is the recognition of students of the month. Okay. Abby Stanton. Abby, can you the month, please? <laughs> Shake my hand, and then you can turn around and face them and get some pictures. And Abby is an exceptionally outgoing and caring little girl. She lights up our classroom every day with her smile and her friendly demeanor. Abby is the type of little girl that is always willing to help someone and be a friend. She is often a leader in the classroom and does an excellent job on all of her work. Abby works hard to do her best and wants to come out on top. Having Abby in the classroom has made learning more fun because of her cheerful personality and her ability to make everyone smile. <coughs> her classmates and teachers in the years to come are going to be thankful for the life she brings to the classroom. Thank you very much. You got one right here? We got no Gifts. Gifts. This is where you get stuff. Barnes and Noble book cards. So you can get some books to read this summer when you're home. There you go. <laughs> Also, Markle's worked really hard this year. He tries to do his best and loves to learn. His biggest accomplishment was his achievement on math test at the end of the year. He really put forth a lot of effort and made tremendous gains. I can tell he really took his learning seriously. He should be proud of his accomplishments. Again, thank you very much. An awesome athlete, Aubrey. Okay, Aubrey. I felt very fortunate this year to have the opportunity to teach Aubrey for the second time, and it wasn't because she was retained the teacher. Was a <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that little girl that I taught in third grade grow into a very responsible and well-organized student. Aubrey always is on time with her assignments. She takes advantage of the opportunity to learn extra credit points and does very neat work. I never have to tell Aubrey to make good use of her time. She is always busy reading a library book or writing her own stories. Aubrey is not only helpful to me, but to her classmates. She also is one of the girls that helps wipe off the lunch tables after lunch. What I really enjoy about Aubrey is her happy attitude. She always makes me smile. This is why I and her other teachers in fifth grade made Aubrey student of the month. Thank you very much. We appreciate your hard work. Brian Smith. Brian is very respectful of others. He is conscientious in his work and eager to participate in class and takes pride in his schoolwork. Brian is a joy to have in class, always cheerful and willing to help. He is a welcome addition to sixth grade. And is the seventh grade choice for student of the month. Brianna is cheerful in class, she gets her work done, she makes positive decisions, and she is very good to have around. We appreciate having her in our class. Brianna, thank you very much. Um, parents, we appreciate first all the work you do helping us with your children. 
they're here as students of the month because of the effort you help. You show them education's important. You help us with it. So we appreciate that. The other part is, I know it's a school night and if people want to get students home, we understand and appreciate that. It's a good time to take off if you want to go and if you want to stay, it's going to be a great board meeting. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you guys. Want to Thank you for taking the time to acknowledge the students as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You have to stay in this show. <laughs> He's the first guy out the door. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you afterwards, Steve, or tomorrow. Bye -bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh, Michelle, come join us up here. <laughs> She's going to keep her distance from this group. Yeah. Yeah. I'll still be polite and ask Michelle or George, do you have anything you'd like to address the board? Okay, at this time I'll go ahead and close public comments. Mm -hmm. And we'll move on to the consent agenda items. At this time I'll be looking for a motion to approve consent agenda items A, B, Separate A and B. Then I'll make a motion to um, approve the consent agenda item A. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Dean, please. Honey. Yes. Uh, Leach? Yes. Nugent? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Young? Epstein? Zimmerman? Yes. Lambert? Yes. This time we looking for a motion to approve consent agenda item B, the financials. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Leach? Yes. Nugent? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Young? Yes. Zimmerman? Yes. Lambert? Yes. <coughs> Heine? Yes. And information item. Start Prairie Principles update. Okay. Anything you want to go over that? Oh, nothing else. Okay. Early learning class, Pat, you want to share with us some of what we're doing with that? Uh, and it just on it, um, ten dollars a day will be. We kind of broke it out. We'll pay on a monthly basis for people that um, participate, uh, so that we can um, do an accurate count. Mostly our months aren't the same, so to do a weekly charge or whatever with our when we have time off we decided to they would be charged. They'll still be charged, um, paid once a month, but the days, the number of days, we broke it out that way. Um, I'm gonna interview next week for um, to hire an instructor. We have four signed up already for it. Uh, our game plan is if we get beyond 10, that we um, open a second session, a PM session. When they register, they're uh, getting, uh, asked AM or PM if they're if we do have to. What which would you like? We're going to use creative curriculum. It's uh, the most um, common curriculum in terms of that. We use that also with our early childhood um, special ed program as well. It's a very much integrated kind of everything the social, emotional, academic um, interaction uh, integrated in all kinds of um, academic area, reading, math, science, social, kind of a little bit of everything, very exploratory based. We had the um, dentist brought in a couple of, maybe you can tell them that piece, where they came from, so the ROE has. State of Illinois has people that go out and certify the early learning classrooms and so we contacted the ROE and asked if someone could kind of help us set ours up, just do some thinking and planning and anticipating. So they sent two retired superintendents who work that gig, and they came out and worked with us for free and helped us out and said they'll come back and evaluate it. Like even though 
we don't have certified teachers in all of the programs they run, they put certified teachers in. And they, they know that what we're trying to do is we're trying to offer programming for people who might not necessarily be able to otherwise. So if we can charge $50 a week, um, we can potentially have students who would be missing preschool otherwise. So we're really trying to target um, not the ones who are going to have preschool regardless. We're trying to find to get the others in. And so we're trying to keep it real reasonable. Um, when we were talking with the ROE, um, it's interesting because their thing was, well, it'd be nice if you hired a certified teacher. And I said, it'd be nice if I could find one for you know, 50 bucks a day, but I'm thinking it isn't going to work. And so we're going to probably take, um, be looking at someone to be more like a parapro and that person would be, you don't have in all of those programs that people are running in churches, that they're not all certified teachers. Those programs are run the same way. You want a curriculum, you want order, you want structure, that'll be in, she'll be watching it, overseeing it, so it'll be a good experience for the children, but it'll be reasonably cost experience as well. The, the other addition, Cindy Mueller, who's the early childhood special education teacher, is really excited about having a partner to go over things with and work with and such. And she's an excellent teacher and has an excellent um, grasp of what needs to be done and how to do what needs to be done. So she'll be an awesome support and mentor for but this is different than the early childhood. It is. I mean, they don't have... Uh, these, these children are not identified in terms of having any kind of speech and language or special needs. Um, and, but to me, runs it like I want any preschool run. <laughs> and if this would be, how, how, what are the hours? 8.30 to 11. So it's a two and a half hour session for them. And we'll probably do a little bit of library and a little bit of PE. It's like so three to five years old? Four year olds only. So we've limited for this year for a first round uh, four and could be five if they just didn't make that cut off. So it'd be um, really the, the children that will be there in the following year. We've limited it to right now to Winter Carver residents initially in the fall if we find that the class we have room or space, I might explore the idea of opening it up to um, that if we've got room, there's, but we'll see. Um, I anticipate filling it up. I, I, there's always been um, lots of questions, phone calls, do you have right. preschool kind of thing, right. or where do you right. go for preschool or that kind of thing. So um, we have it on the sign right now. It's uh, been in the newsletter, the village newsletter, went home in my the school newsletter, went in the newspaper, the ZB News. So um, hopefully we'll see. We think it takes between five and six students to pay. So if we have six, It'll pay for itself. Um, right now, we have money in our account in the before and after school program, so we probably have ten thousand in that. Day. And we're still going to continue that. We're going to continue that, but what what happens is that we're not trying to make money, but we're not trying to lose money. But I can use that money if I have trouble with my my preschool, and so everything will wash until the preschool gets off on its own. If it doesn't work then we won't do it again, but if it does, sure. and your thing, Jim, of three-year-olds, we have space, and it's working. The sense is it's going to make it easier for kindergarten if more of the children have a preschool experience, so we'll be more effective at the business we're about. So if it worked out and we had space, we'd probably look at third grade, three-year-olds. It's funny because OLH has a preschool, and that's the biggest waiting list class they have is preschool because of the lack of preschools that exist, <laughs> number of preschools that exist. Um, I anticipate having, I'd like to have all the kids that are four so they can have them a year earlier sure, well, sure. and another and year and know, who's, and know who's coming. Why is it that you chose um, just the morning instead of an all day, or morning and afternoon, why did you choose that instead of a full time? Um, you know what? I. I Kind of what we're, we've been doing with early childhood anyway. I'm not sure that they're ready for a full day. I think they need naps and they need a few, a little bit of that. And I didn't really 
didn't want it to be a daycare. Okay. I really wanted it to be preschool. Okay. And so and to get into my game plan is that we're getting ready to be in kindergarten mm -hmm. in terms of what it's like to be in a school system and work with people and play with people and get along with people and those things, socialize. And so, um, and I think we can do that in two and a half hours. And you don't have to serve a lunch or anything, right. so you don't have to right. get into that. Just it also that keeps the cost of the two day yeah. right. 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 But the, in another year, you can examine it and see what you're doing and see if you want to do something different. I mean, we've gone from before and after school care, you got that. Now you'll have the preschool, you got that. At the end of the year, you can look at it and say, is there another direction we should be going? Should right. we be doing more or less or something? And, but it's, to, to me, start out small. Give us a good chance to be successful, and then if it works, look at doing something different. Thank you. Your board meeting dates. I think you've got a calendar in there, Sean. Looks like we are all out. Well, I think we're close. We try. How's that? Okay. You take it. Sure. The, so the calendar you have, just like a 12-month calendar, what we did is we put in the, like what we had on the district calendar, just so you can kind of see where stuff is spaced out, and then we put in the board meetings. Essentially, it's kind of what we've always done the fourth Monday of every month, uh, save for, uh, I believe it's three months, in December, or actually no, in August, it'll be is it a week earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a week earlier because we seem to run into the orientation night right. often, so we put it a week earlier to avoid that. In December, it's earlier because Christmas. Um, because of Christmas, winter break, and um, so that's that. So July, January, February, March, I think is a week earlier because of spring break, and then May is going to be a week earlier because of Memorial Day. Again. So that's kind of the dates. Well, this is an info next 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 month. I'll just bring you a list with all the dates. Kind of how we have it on our so if anybody sees anything it's a good time to get back to us and uh, yeah, tell us the fix it. yeah yeah and you get a kind of a quick look at school uh do you contract for the meals yes and the increase in it is six percent is that right Dan? Another it increases 2.9 percent, and then they add another 11 cents. But it's like six percent, two threes. Yeah. What happened is you can only go up in Illinois, like rate of inflation, like 2.9 percent. Is what Dan said. And if they go more than that, you have to rebid. But this year, the federal government changed the guidelines for the lunches, and it's going to cost more money for them to do it. So because of that, they allowed them to increase another, like a 3% there and then the other. And when we did this, and I'm going to say two years ago, and they were the only ones that bid, and I was really, in fact, the reason we went out two years ago wasn't time, but the company we had gave us a rate that was bigger than the 3% that was allowed. And so the state required us to bid. They bid and then pulled their bid out and we ended up with preferred meals and no one else was interested. So the 3% that the federal government cost and the 3%, 2.9 for inflation, uh, seems reasonable and I don't think we're gonna end up with something better. So my recommendation would be that we, we do that next month. But you've got time to look at it, you can ask questions if you want. And if we put it off, they can come at a higher price, right? They could, they could, and that's what ended up happening with the one we had before, yes. But it's mostly a task to win. Right, right. Could it would be better with those, it new, is with those new standards. Mm -hmm. Nice to have it as a service for, for our parents. It is nice to have it. And we have a board policy. I'm sorry? have the uh, work lines online, that'd be great. Okay. So we can um, forget it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we can look at that, right, Daniel? Make a note? Well, we'll talk to him and see. Put it in a file. It's in the trash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it may just be it may just be a form that's there Pretty that people much. just download whenever they want. Yeah, a PDF. Right. Just a PDF. Because the kids lose um, you see the changes, instructions, persons with suggestions or complaints, and or news and uniform grievance procedure. Um, there's definition on homework and what it's to be used for. And again, policies, contents, are local school board's discretion. This is what they're recommending. Homework is used to reinforce and apply previously covered concepts. It really, to me, it looked like the things they're saying are the things we ought to be doing. I have a real quick question. I guess our scholarships that would have been not playing in the but um, it's, it's the third policy. It um, honors and awards, awards and honors. It's taken out in the first line, but then it's referred to again in like the third or fourth line. I just didn't know it was supposed to be. Is any awards, honors uh, for outstanding scholarship, achievement, and our distinguished service in such ways to minimize bias from a fairness? I think they're using scholarship in a different yeah. definition there. Yeah. Scholarship, not scholarship. Right. And I guess the, we used to have scholarships within the district, so I just didn't know. I still but think we do, yeah. Chris. Um, there, it's a form of them. Rotary was doing one, but I guess it's not now. They were doing the bonds for kids for college, even though they weren't. But I don't, I don't think that we have any more scholarships at all. Or even right. like, do we? No. no. Teachers do. Do one for the graduating high school students. Right, right. So that's not even part of the district. Yeah, but yeah, that applies here necessarily. Make sure that it wasn't something that still needs to be Okay. Um, I'll make a note and we'll go back through it. And, and I'm just saying appreciate that. I'll look it over and try to make sure I'm comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Just in case. Let's check. There you go. Those recessions. Student testing and assessment program. And again, I think this is probably what we're doing and makes good sense. Items. This is looking for a motion for the approval of the 2012-13 student handbook. Let's take D. Georgia's name off of it. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my fault. That whole page I'm shouldn't have been in there. So <laughs> sorry. Well, no, not hopefully. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> not really worried about it. The entire page is wrong. It shouldn't have been in there. Oh, sorry. There you go. Yeah, we got it. Thanks. Or was it just supposed to be super special stuff? I don't know. Ted, do you know why the like two stars by education of children with disabilities? There's about five different subsections. Two stars promotions. by English language learning. My only guess would be that there were probably policies that used to be written on the bottom of them and they we got rid of the policy stuff, so we probably um, got rid of the stars. So sex education has two stars too. So we can take the stars out, probably? I would think so. I can't think of a good yep. reason. Well, it says at the very top, yeah. the two star uh, on handbook on page two. Yep. It says this handbook with two dots. I mean, your two oh, stars. So summary. The I summary of the board policy. So. That's uh, okay. very good. So we leave them in. But then I yeah, star darn star everything in there, so. <laughs> That's because it's on. <laughs> yeah, there's not, <laughs> nothing to direct 
quote from our policy for the most part. Not right, a lot. it says it's a summary. But that's what I'm saying is then you star everything. You take out the stars and then just say at the top, this is a summary of yeah. right. our policies. Right. You probably, I mean, probably cite the website and tell people in there that you yeah. can go to the website if you're looking for more specific. And that may be yeah. rather than yeah. stars, you when say a majority of the policies right. are. Yeah. Like the first line on the top of two, you should just yep. say. Huh? Yeah, some of the ones that aren't start also refer directly to the policy, too. Right. You just take out the stars and just put in go to the website if you want to know more. Right. I have a question on. Level two infractions, page 19. And this is just a question. I see that threatening and harassing students and threatening staff, there's like a big discrepancy between first offense on those two. Is, is it a lot worse to threaten staff than it is students? Or just curious. You know, I'm just wondering do should it, you know, maybe under first occurrence, you know, one to three days OSS based on Severity, even just so we can throw it in there. Because if it's a bad enough one, you're probably going to suspend it anyway. And if it doesn't say it under first occurrence, and you do it under the first occurrence, we're going to run into problems. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I can what I can speak to is the number of times that that sort of thing occurs, one versus the other, yeah. is you know, junior high is pretty. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kick your butt. Right. You know, kid to kid is a you know somewhat common occurrence that goes on. And it's usually idle threats. Right. Versus if I told the teacher I'm going to meet you at 38 acres and kick your butt, I think that's probably... The, the one yeah. thing that, that I would want us to think about, I don't know if we can ch change it and s still vote on it and get it done in time, is that I like the idea of you having, the administrator having more flexibility to be, to, to, to impose a bigger punishment because in reality those go on all the time I'm going to kill you and that's not what you're looking for but if somebody does threaten somebody and they there is merit to it you would want to be able to impose the penalty without having that down it seems like it limits you a little bit With, if on the top of page 18 there's uh, the line that says administration reserves the right to increase or modify consequences based on the severity or circumstance of the infraction Good. I'm okay then. I'm okay. I think that's really important because yeah. that says you can have some really picky unit stuff that would lock you into right, right. This has got to suspend somebody for two, you know, it's going to be more trouble. And or you, you can't suspend every day, you know, yeah. who the problem I think you're okay. Yeah, good. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? Sure. <laughs> Nugent. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Young. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. Lambert. Yes. Heine. Yes. Leach. Yes. Item B. The, the tentative amended fiscal year 2012 budget 30 day public review. We're looking for a motion to approve that. Discussion. Dan, you want to review that a little bit of the highlights? Yeah, it's the same thing that we had last month. It's just in the legal budget form. So the, the numbers are just put into the, the, legal, the legal form. Essentially, we added um, about 240000 in the salary cost based on the projections that didn't carry over in the system. Right. Um, and then we also had an increase in uh, the right. revenues for our mandated categoricals because we actually got four payments this year. Right. Um, right. Two were from this year, two were actually from, that they owed us from last school year. Mm -hmm. right. We were only expecting to get three because we, I mean a year ago, even still, you don't know what the state's gonna right. do. And so we've already actually gotten four payments. So I, I doubt we'll get another one, but. So that's, that's, that's the change in the revenue, that's correct. Yeah. And there's a couple, there were a couple of minor changes because uh, some of the buildings cut their costs to hire a teacher, so the fifth, sixth split, we kind of did that, but that doesn't change your, your net expenditures. It just changes the way the money is going. Uh, that is going to more accurately reflect what is intended to happen. Anything else? Thompson? Yes. Young? Yes. Zimmerman? 
Yes. Lambert. Yes. Heine. Yes. Leach. Yes. Nugent. Yes. One year contract of games. One of the things that I did last year, Christian one was helpful to break out a lot of the time that they were spending and what they were doing, and so I got that last year. And I'll be looking at trying to get either monthly or bi-monthly. We have been for a meeting for uh, Ed Council meeting. We're in this week, but if I don't catch it this week, I've got it down on Ed Council before, so that I can be sharing at least bi-monthly with you guys the specific information things that you so that you have a better sense of what that is. So it just makes it easier for you when you're voting this stuff. So that'll be You know what we're getting for the money. At that yes, sir. Point. They work out pretty well. Yes. And they do a lot of work. Putting a server together now for that new student software program, and it's a server that's specs by the company that we're using. So it's we're putting it together, getting it ready, and they'll download all of our stuff. Uh, so, well, they're very helpful. Same cost, no increase. And it looks like no, pretty much. No, but that would it good. Mm -hmm. They cover everything network based. Hardware. As long as it, if it's a non-network hardware, that's where we get charged. Yeah. I don't think we ever get charged. They're pretty flexible. They're working on Pat's sign out front, so we can figure out how to. Well, with Power School next year being the first year of implementation, that's kind of a, a big deal because we're hosting it. We're not letting Power School host it because we're saving money that way. And so any updates, which I'm going to guess. With the new state reporting and everything. I'm going to guess that they're going to tweak things. Pearson will tweak things a whole bunch, and so every time there's an update, help you going to have to update that power school. And I don't, you know, I'm going to guess that they won't charge us extra for all that, but it will be more time that they'll be spending on, on us. So, I just lots just of, to let you know. Just lots of technology stuff. They are continuing. Yeah, because the way I read it, that's network software. So right, so it's included. I'm just saying, you yeah. know, that is going to be more time, even though it is included in the yeah. whole than what they're used to, like what their typical service has right now. So I need a motion to approve the one-year contract with Health Needs. Someone. Second. Any other discussion? Young. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. Lambert. Yes. Heine. Yes. Leach. Yes. Nugent. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Okay, and we have the four board policies. I'll be looking for a motion to approve board policy 6235, 6240, 6250, and 6255. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. Lambert. Yes. Heine. Yes. Leach. Yes. Nugent. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Uh, there's not a bunch. I'm reporting or employees contract after the 35th year, they're entitled to a bonus of $1,250, which can be altered. My uh, 35th year. Um, hey, hey, Judy. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Letter from Senator Brady, and I read it, but I'm not sure what he said. <laughs> 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 I did read it. Sorry. Yes, it was on politician ease. Pat Hodges um, included from Pat updates, ISA article, and it just right now they're they have two more weeks that they're supposed to be in session, and every day there's like a million things flying around saying what they're going to be addressing. So the retirement system, transportation, school district paying the retirement system, reduction in student state to the amount of money you get per child just and they're, all of them are bad some are just real bad so you don't know I, I share that with you so you get an idea of what's going on and they're saying in two weeks we'll know because they want to leave Springfield at home but it yeah I, I believe there's going to be change in the retirement system and the only reason they don't want to do it but they're saying if they don't do it the Moody's is going to raise the lower the bond rate, and so they'll have to pay more money for everything, and the taxpayers will be mad at them for that. So they're afraid to, to not do that, and then they don't have enough money to fund all the things they're funding. So they've got to cut Medicaid and probably um, education some, and it's 
just where I'm not looking at that. So, yes. Sure, Mike Madigan will tell him before. Yeah. He knows what's going to happen. Yeah. He just had to share the share yes. How long this line has a question in the May um, ISB news bulletin. Yep. There was a little article um, we talked about Governor Quinn setting up this panel to look at shared services versus consolidation. Have you heard much of that? I mean, it was Quinn's plan to yep. have this forced consolidation and he had this master plan, but he put this commission together to look at yep. shared services and they made a number of recommendations. They did. Is very, that going out? I mean, it's going on the lines of things that you and the other superintendents have talked about. Yep. They're, it makes a lot of sense. They're saying that the consolidations are really hard to do, even to get done, um, to get people to vote, um, to change the salaries, to do all this stuff, but that you can without losing, maintaining your autonomy, so mm -hmm. you can be a district, but that in fact is savings to be had if the high school were to provide payroll services for all four districts. And so they're saying that we probably won't do a ton of consolidations, but we <coughs> ought to be looking at trying to find ways to share services. So, so, uh, uh, they can choose. I'm sorry. Right. I was just going to ask if that if that would be up to us for what services we want to share, or would they be telling us what services we need to share? No, they're they're saying they're they're leaving it to the districts. But what they're saying is that the they went through and looked at one of the things in the Illinois law, and they could change it, but one of the things that's there now is if the districts consolidate, so if the four districts all went together, then everybody right now with the way the law is written would be paying the rate the high school is paying for teachers. Right. So you go to the highest one. So they could make a change in that, but there's, without changing those laws, consolidations would be extremely expensive because we would automatically go up to the <coughs> highest school. level. Right. High right? And they give you like four years, I think, to, to make that change, but in four years you have to right. do it. Yeah. But then, um, but it would all be based on what they, what their recommendations are. No, they're, they're, they're saying that the districts themselves probably should look less at consolidation and more at so saying, is there any incentive the for the Zion High School to say, wow, we'll do your payroll, we'll help you do, you know, a couple other things they could do, they could do help you do your and technology, things, and they can, you know, like say, Cindy we'll give you, a, we'll give you a sweetener for that. I mean, that's what they're going to have to do. Otherwise, why? Well, I mean, high school might work with us, but we've tried to do it on our own. But right. if, they, if the state would give an incentive, I think they talked about an incentive uh, in that piece right. that Cindy said. But the real incentive is going to come as they're making all these cuts, and people. So nobody wants to change because you're afraid of how it's going to work. But when you start getting cut, and they're cutting the amount of money you have, and you're saying, okay, we're going to lay off more staff, we're going to end up cutting transportation, then at that point you become more interested and, and more willing to do it. So they're saying they don't think consolidations really are where the savings are going to be. They think people are going to have to. And they, Jim, they, they did have in there that they would, there would be potential grants that would be for like a year or two that would to never try out spur some stuff. On that they would do but that, that was, yes, Cindy, that was a report. And it, it was along the, the line of what you guys have been working on. I think it was yeah. really insane mm -hmm. for us to be a little bit ahead of, you know, we were ahead of what the state's recommending. Okay, so I guess we have a couple of things for closed session. So at this time, we're looking for a motion to enter into closed session for the appointment. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Any discussion? Any Yes. Leach. Yes. Nugent. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Young. Yes. Zimmerman. Yes. Lambert. Yes. George, would I have anything else except just German on the agenda? So sometimes it was an issue. You're good if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when I saw it.